we got a little preseason episode here as the UConn men's basketball team gets ready to go to Europe. So joining us is Alex. So Alex, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you for having me again. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I feel like the last time we spoke was right after the championship. We had the parade and, and all that stuff going on. What's it been like as that's, you know, all started to wind down a bit and now you're already getting to think about next season? Yeah, it's been a lot. I think we've just all been busy ever since the buzzer sounded to, you know, before summer started. So, um, you know, just a different it just, everything just feels different now after winning the national championship in a good way. And, um, you know, we deserve it. And uh, just the celebrations and all of that was amazing. And then now being able to flip the script into a new season, hit the refresh button to attempt to do it again. So um, it's been fun and just really just having this new team to work on accomplishing that goal again. What's the off season been like for you? I mean, what parts of your game have you been working on it as you've been doing some workouts on your own, getting ready to start, you know, ramp things back up with the team? Yeah, I'll definitely say just a little bit of everything. Just I think I can improve everything. Um, just tighten out my game, but more importantly, post moves, just being able to post up smaller guys down the block, which I need to do a better job of. Just ball handling, just being able to put the ball on the deck more, whether that's attacking a closeout or just coming off a pick and roll. And then uh, defensively and just my body, just that's something I always want to continue to improve on. So I definitely say more specifically those things, but in general, everything still. I, I saw you got to spend some time down at the uh, Jason Tatum camp there. What was that experience like for you? Yeah, that was, I mean, Tatum's my favorite player in the NBA. So just getting invited to that was amazing. And um, it was super cool. It was super fun learning from the pros. He's Tatum was there. So was Brad Beal, Paulo, CP3. All of that. So just learning from them, watching the detail, and then um, just playing against them and then playing against the other top college wings in the country. So, you know, it's just great competition in there. It's a great environment. And um, I really enjoyed the camp, just learned a lot. And uh, it was, yeah, it was super fun. So I know one of the perks of going on this European trip is that you guys get some extra practice time. So take me through what was the first practice like with this new group together out on the court as you're starting to, you know, build that chemistry, build those bonds and get things going. Yeah. The first practice I'd say, I'd say it's hard. I think it was like a wake up call for most of them just from, you know, they start to see a different side of coach Hurley. He kind of started entering that in season mode type side, but like, you know, he was just like, you know, he's trying to wake them up and they, you know, prepare them for the target that we have on our back. But, um, it was a longer practice, definitely a lot more playing and stuff. And, um, Took some time to adjust, but I think we had a great first practice. And I think our practice sense have been great. So um, definitely have seen a lot of improvement throughout the team. And, um, you know, we're just continuing to get a lot better every day. So we do have a long way to go. And I know that Europe trip is going to help us out so much. I mean, having been at that open practice that you guys had, I mean, I, I could see the competitive nature that you guys all have it and how competitive those practices are day in and day out. What we saw, is is that how, how it is truly every practice there? Yeah, the competitive energy is off the chart. Coach Hurley is off the chart competitive. All the coaches staff, like, they're super competitive. All the players are competitive. And um, that really was kind of how a normal practice is when – no one's in there. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw like, I mean, Kamani's running out to half court to call timeouts, like Luke's jumping up and down. What, what's it like having them, you know, coach the, the inner squad games there? Because it seems like they're both really into it and going at it. They both are really into it. And I love it. <laughs> I think just hearing another voice out there is amazing. Just seeing their competitive side on the sidelines as well. I mean, they don't get many opportunities to be in the head coach as well during the game. So just having them be the head coach for a little bit, it's unique and I love it. And um, they both are two of the most competitive people as well. And, um, you know, you do see Kamani yell and timeout and stuff, even though probably doesn't have another timeout. <laughs> and then um, really kind of just see their side of things on the coaching side, what they like to do and just like learn a little bit more about them. Yeah. As you've been going through these practices, obviously you got some some new additions to this team, whether it was, you know, through transfer portal or, or through the freshmen. Take take the listeners through a little bit, some of these new guys and, and what to expect from them. Maybe they weren't at the practice and weren't able to see what they could do, but what you've started to learn about these guys from being with them day in and day out. Yeah, I'll start with the oldest one, Cam. 
I think he's just going to surprise a lot of people. I know he surprised a lot of people at the practice and, um, you know, his competitive edge, just his approach towards the game is he fits perfectly here and just his ability to shoot, put it on the deck and really just do a little bit of everything on the offensive end is amazing. And, um, yeah, I think he's going to be the biggest surprise of the newcomers and just, you know, he had a great season at Rutgers last year and he just continues to prove everyone wrong about himself and, He's never going to stop working. He's one of the hardest workers I've seen. And, um, yeah, he's just a terrific player, going to surprise a lot of people, can shoot it. And he's just he's just so fun to play with on the basketball court. And then um, the freshman, Steph. We'll, we'll, go, we'll go to all five freshmen. Steph, <laughs> um, big physical guard. He's, he's very gifted for how freshmen, like freshmen normally don't come in with yeah. his physicality in his body and all that stuff. So, um He's very gifted in that, and um, he's starting to use it well. He has a great IQ for the game, and um, he's definitely – he has that star potential. I think if he continues to let the coaching staff coach him, I think he could take it to a whole nother level. But um, just his skill and just his talent that he has is amazing. Solo, he plays with a lot of energy, athletic, tough, and uh, he's always willing to learn. That's the same thing with all five freshmen. They're all willing to learn, all willing to listen. But uh, his energy, he can shoot it way better than I thought he could. And um I'd really say his energy is gonna get him out on the core and defensively he's been he's been great so far. Jaden's another athletic athletic wing shooter, can attack it. I learned that he does he is another one that wants to learn, but he really is like attends to the details and he really like he's I think he's been surprising a lot of people as well with his work ethic and just what he wants to do out on the basketball core. Uh Yusef Great shot blocker. I mean, another one that wants to – I can't keep saying that. But, um, you know, um, I think for him to have Donovan and Samson around, I think that's just going to help him out so much, just learning from them. But then uh, playing against them every day. I mean, he's playing against Donovan every day down low. He's playing against Samson, who provides a different look at the five compared to Donovan. And um, he's going to get so much better this year. And he does – he brings the energy. He's always yelling, clapping, and just – trying to get people excited, whether that's from a dunk or a block. And then Jalen, he's been hurt lately, but from what I've seen playing is um, I'm really trying to help him take under his wing because I think we'll be playing similar positions and I want him to have the freshman season that I had and I want him to see him succeed. So really just trying to teach him, you know, the physicality of how to play at the four, but then the craftiness and just the IQ that you have when you play at the three. So I'm just trying to, guide him in a way to where he could be successful when he comes back from injury. No, that's a, this is a good scouting report. I think everyone's going to, going to like that there. Um, I, I think you, you mentioned how Cam in particular kind of jumped off for people who are at the open practice. I, I know Samson surprised a lot of people yesterday mm-hmm. as well. Just scrolling through my feed. He was a guy that I, I was seeing a lot of comments on what's it been like seeing him, you know, obviously dealt with the injury last year, coming back and seeing what he's able to do now while he's healthy. Yeah, I think for our team, that was no surprise with Samson that he's been doing that throughout the entire year this year and even at times last year, too. But, um, you know, I, I really do just want to see him get that opportunity. I mean, that injury did set him back. And I think it took it had, he had a year that he didn't plan on having. But um, I think this year he's going to prove a lot of people. He's going to be like the biggest. I think he's going to be the biggest surprise in the Big East. What he does athletically is God gifted and um, he's been able to make a three pointer and just like, play off the bounce as well at the five is special. And um, I'm so happy to see him out there playing. I mean, I battled him all the time last year and I, I always wanted to see him out there on the court until that injury. And then, um, yeah, I'm just so happy he's out there. I think he deserves it. He deserves it more than anyone else just to get out there and start playing. And he's been unbelievable this summer. I'm going to take a quick break from the interview to tell you about my friends at Martin Rosal's meets. This fourth-generation Connecticut family business produces kielbasa, hot dogs, sausages, and deli meats using Martin Rosal's very own original recipes. Their products can be found in grocery stores, delis, restaurants, and hot dog stands throughout the state. And if you're looking for your fill right away, check out their retail store in New Britain. For more information, visit martinrosalsinc.com and go support a UConn fan-owned business. And now, back to the interview. I, I know when we spoke and did one of these last time, we, we weren't sure who was coming back. How, how excited were you when, when you found out that Tristan would be back this year? 
Very excited. I was very excited. You know, he was the point guard of the national championship team. He had that big game against San Diego State, and he just always finds people when they're open. And he really is the perfect point guard. He can get his own shot while making the extra pass or the easy pass. And, you know, I think it's important for a team to have a great point guard, and he's the definition of a great point guard. So, I was smiling when I seen him come back. I was smiling when all those phone emojis started coming out. I knew he was coming <laughs> back. So um, it was all good. It was all good. I know everyone is so, so happy that he's back. I know one thing we've seen in some of the social media videos that I don't, I don't think we saw at the practice yesterday was Donovan shooting some threes. Give us from, mm-hmm. from what you've seen. Is he, is he the next knockdown shooter on the team? I'm not. I can't boost his ego that much. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he can make it. But we're not we're not going that far. He'll be he'll be he could be a top five shooter on the team. We'll say that. But um, <laughs> no, he's been making them in practices, even the workouts. I'll watch some of his individual workouts, and he's making like ten in a row at a time or something. And I tell him like the next one's a miss, and then he'll yell, you know, something <laughs> like not. And then um, no, he's worked on he's worked on a lot this summer. I think it's gonna be yeah, deadly if like. You know, if teams just play for the role, but then he pops out here and there and makes a three. I think, you know, of course, UConn's going to go crazy with that because they see yeah. Donovan make a three. But, um, you know, he's, he's worked on it. He's a, he's a good shot. It's good form for someone his size, So, um, which I'm very surprised by. But um, he's been making them. He made some in practice, too. So not, I don't know if he made one during the open practice, but um, closed practice when we play, yeah, he's, he's been he's- making them. <laughs> So as you, you've been through the off season here, I, I know one of my favorite things to always get a little footage of is, is the team softball game. <laughs> how, how, how did that go? Are you, are you, I, I mean, I know you've thrown out like some first pitches this year, so I know, I know you probably had to be ready for it, right? Um, I thought I was ready for it. I think <laughs> so Donovan and I were the captains of our team. And then, um, you know, during warmups, I felt good catching the ba- softball, catching, you know, bat and all that stuff. I felt good. And then it went downhill from there. I think we lost – after the first two innings, it was like we were losing 17-3. to three. It was embarrassing. Like, <laughs> bad performance. <laughs> it was just – Who's the, be- who's the best, uh, like, baseball, softball guy on the team? Oof. It'd have to be from the winning team. So honestly, like Coach Hurley's really good. A couple of the GAs were really good. Steph was good. Um, I don't want to say anyone from our team because our team was disappointing. I'm not saying anyone from our team. Even though I know someone probably is good on our team, but I'm not saying anyone. And then we we lost by ten. Embarrassing performance. I was I was I had a pop. But the one of the I don't even know what it is. Like the pop out, I think, when the ball hit in the air. Yeah. The sun was in my eyes. I couldn't see the ball. Just let it drop. I didn't want to get a concussion. <laughs> it was a bad game. I'm trying to forget about it still. <laughs> All right. Sorry for bringing it up then, but I I, I, I had to. Um, you know, one reason why we're doing one of these podcasts now is, is the team's got a trip to Europe coming up. Uh, you excited to get overseas, get some game action in, uh, and get to experience a new part of the world there? Oh, yeah, I'm so excited. I think most of us is our first time going out the country. So even just exploring a whole new city is going to be just going to be so fun for us. And then um, playing games there as well. I mean, we haven't played an official game in so long. So just being to go out there and play three games as a new team, see where we're at right now, get better from it, learn a lot from it. um, It's going to be key. And I think, you know, most teams don't get the opportunity to do this during the summer. So I think it's going to be a big advantage for us. And uh, I think we're going to come back a much better team, a much more connected team. And um, I think it's really just going to be the takeoff point for our, for our season this year. I know, I know you've got a few spots on the uh, on the trip there. Is there is there one place in particular you're most excited to to check out or, or see? Um, I've always wanted to – I know we're going to a Barcelona soccer game, so um, I'm very oh. excited to go there and I've, I've heard the soccer games are crazy in europe so i'm actually excited to watch that yeah no that that sounds like it it'll it'll be awesome when you're you know overseas doing this trip you, you guys get some time to seems to be able to explore the cities and do some things as well as plays is that right 
Mm-hmm. No, definitely. We we even have a couple days where we're not doing anything. It's just your whole day to explore yourself, which I was very surprised by, which I'm excited for. Yeah. All right. Well, one of our advertisers here, Martin Rosels, uh, now, now that I know that I've got to throw this question from, and we'll, we'll call this one out from them. Uh, do you, are you like a, a big travel planner? Like as you got a couple days, like, are, are you researching all these things to do, trying to figure out what to do? Or you just kind of go with the flow of what everyone else is doing? I'm going with the flow. I don't think I've never researched it all before. I went to a place which is bad, but um, I'm honestly go with the flow. I think I'll if I hear about a place before I go there, I'll go there. But honestly, like the Eiffel Tower, if we can go there, I'm gonna go there. But um, yeah, researching, nah, I just nah. whatever the team wants to do, or if I see something cool, we're on a bus ride to practice, I'll, and I want to stop there, I'll probably do that. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll have to regroup when you get back. So I got to hear like the best food, that type of stuff that you got to do while you were over there. Because I know that's one of the perks of getting over there, getting some good, extra good food in you. I want a croissant out there in France. I heard yeah. about the croissant. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you get, you got to go in. All right. Will, will, will you try uh, some escargot, uh, some snails there if, if anyone uh, brings those your way? Actually, yeah. It's a, it's a one-time trip. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> all right i think that's the video we need like going down the line and, and seeing who will eat the escargot uh, while you're over there i i know i would not um I'll, I'll wrap with this one favorite non-basketball thing you did this summer Oof, went to the beach cape cod i think that was the go. best i love the cape so just spending time at the beach with my friends i think that was my favorite part Awesome. Well, Alex, uh, thanks so much for hopping on in the in the summertime here. I, I know between the practice and this, everyone should have some content to get them through the next couple of weeks here and uh, yeah. see see what see what comes of this trip to Europe. I know everyone is going to be trying to find a way to watch these games somehow or, or get stats from them, but we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll get them. No, definitely. I'm glad to be back. I love doing these podcasts. So thank you for having me once again. Absolutely. Anytime.